and welcome back in this video we will learn how to enable authentication and authorization in oscillate all right so as you can see in their documentation they are saying if you want to enable any authentication you just need to have this kind of configuration and most probably thing like we should have this key because we need to mention that key in the oscillate configuration file which you can see over here it's the same key all right so for this demo i'll be using uh, identity server provider like so i just need to scroll a little down and you can see for identity server we are open i have to use this kind of configuration all right so you can see i have my identity server code over here this you can download from internet i'll put the link uh, in the description by the way so you can also download the same let me run it so this server will help us to generate the token okay so let me minimize this one and you can see this is our service underlying service which oscillate i mean through the oscillate gateway will be uh, you know we'll call this api but since it's since we are using authorized tag over here so that means if somebody is trying to access this api they won't be able to access they have to pass the right valid token okay and you can see here is my api gateway code <clears throat> All right, so it's a plain simple code by the way and as they mentioned you can see on their website for identity server provider we need to have this kind of configuration we just have a provider key and then we need to provide the url this is nothing but where you are actually the server is running and when there is scope and the secret that's it important thing is the key okay let me show you the same thing over here i'm giving the same key name over here and you can see this is the uh, like my uh, you know like information of my server which is uh, nothing but let me show you like you can see it's running on port number 5000 and just now in front of you i executed and it's also running on 5000 okay that's the important thing and uh, the test key i'll show you i'm using the same word name like if i want to change here i need to you know use the same key over here also authentication authentication provider key okay hmm now let's go back and let me run the gateway so now my gateway is running now i'll run the underlying microservice now let me try to call this api without passing the token okay and you can see the underlying microservice is running at port number 5001 I'll show you the oscillate configuration it's nothing but same thing <clears throat> so let me take this in and i'll just uncomment this authorization code i'll just see so it's saying unauthorized okay so for that first we need to generate the token there are like many ways to generate the token depending on the uh, like what kind of what kind of you know your grant type you are using so for example in this uh, demo i'll show you two types like code and the password one okay <coughs> In the code, let me show you. So let's generate the token. Let me clean the old tokens if something is there. Okay, so token is there. Now if I try to access this one slash home, you can see I'm able to call the API. I'll put a debugger also just to double check see debugger is coming and i'm and i got the data here i inject this authorization if i put it it's not working if i enable it it should be working i mean the total uh, the token is expired i can generate the token back let me delete the old one can see that it is coming it's working okay so that's how we are able to enable the authentication in the gateway so i'll just repeat again you just need to have this setting like where your i just there you just need to provide this information where your server is running i mean to say that authentication server once you are done with that you just need to have an authentication key name i mean to say the provider key name and put the same authorization uh, authentication provider key name in the oscillate json configuration file like this 
over here okay and next thing is like let's say like you might be having so many apis and depending on the scope you want to call the api so for that what you can do so for example let me show you i'll put a debugger in the uh, gateway so that i can show you that the scopes <clears throat> Or I can show you directly here itself in this, this like you can say I have like uh, email type scope I have a scope type uh, uh, like you what is the like how my scope is there in the like you can say in the API or you can use any like client ID like any any kind of or any special scope is there which you can which you want to mention the host like JSON so you can mention over here so for example I am saying I want the user who is having this kind of scope is basically in that token then only allow them to use this API if I delete this that means all valid user will be able to call this API getting the difference if I don't mention this one so any token which is getting from the identity server this server I mean to say all user will be able to call any API okay now there is one more thing is there custom player so for example that's where you want to like let's say you want to differentiate a multiple users so for example user one is there they should be able to call certain apis and user two you want to you know give a, some extra claim to them so that they can call another api so that's why you see that the urls now gateway slash one gateway slash two and what is the difference between the uh, above and the below configuration is just one extra claim i heard a custom claim name and a custom claim value just to explain you the example i gave this name you can put any name how this is coming you will go back to their authorization tab they are saying if you want to enable authorization you just need to use this key route claim requirements user type so that means you create your own claim and give whatever name you want to give so in their example they are saying there is a claim name called user type and the value of that user type is nothing but register in my case what i gave custom claim name custom claim value okay how to do that that also i'll show you so for that what you need to do you need to go to startup configure method and then you need to use this there are many ways to implement this one i have implemented in a, like in a separate class like custom middleware if you put directly middleware over here you won't be getting the like user is authenticated or not so what i am doing i am using there this component uh, middleware injection this one what they are saying if you want to do some operation like before authentication or at the time of authentication or before authorization metal were getting caught or maybe when the authorization metal is getting caught so i am doing it a before authorization metal. so you can see over here i am seeing customer i am inheriting this class oscillate pipeline configuration it's the same class which you can see over here oscillate pipeline configuration correct so in this i am calling this uh, pre i am using this uh, pre authorization middleware that means i want to do something before the authorization so what i am doing over here i am checking if you see i am just trying to you know like uh, like include like, the example so depending on uh, your requirement you can make use of this middleware so for example let's say you want to you want to check for a specific user where you want to give an extra claim so what i am trying to say here just check over there if the user is bob then enrich the claim that means add extra claim if any other user is getting authenticated over here then don't do this extra claim adding just uh, allow the request and whatever the request so for example like i'll show you a demo by the way so if user blob bob is there they will be getting an extra claim and they will be able to call extra api where this claim is available and other users will be able to call whatever is the normal apis this is one example which you can do let's say you want to do some more kind of operations like depending on the token there's some information is there or so what you can do you can reject the request also so what i'm doing just an example whenever this is just a, a random if condition but what you could do you can return the request itself and you can say whatever the error type and message it will return it will not even call the internal microservice so in this i am saying unauthorized or you can say let's say you want to give any different kind just you can say internet server error or some error or some random thing okay so let me give you an example of this one so let me clear this one so all tokens are cloned clear now what i'll do so first i'll show you allies let me 
I'm using this uh, user. Now the token is generated. Now observe, I'll put a debugger over here. You can see the debugger is coming in the gateway. I am able to see the email is not matching so that I will not add this extra claim. These two conditions is not there. I am just simply uh, allowing, the, allowing this request to go to the underlying microservice. When it will go, it's able to call this underlying microservice, which you can see API. And you see the data is coming over here. Okay. Now I'll change this route because that's the difference over there. So now first I'll show you the JSON. So far we have executed this one the above one the, this the route which is having gateway one now in the gateway two it's the same api but what i am saying user should have this extra custom claim if the user doesn't have this one don't allow them to use this api so if i try to use the same user and try to call this api i'll just change the url you can see i have changed over here one to two i'll call this api see it's coming over here so user is not having the extra claim so i'll directly allow the call the api but now you will see it's saying forbidden because user doesn't have that extra claim so we even the user is valid but we are not allowing the user to you know use that api because user doesn't have that or the, you know uh, extra claim now let me clear this now this time what i'll do i'll authenticate using the user bob observe this time You can see the email id is of bob and i'm saying using this here i've just hard coded you can use any uh, service or a db or something and fetch the extra claim like user specific claims and enrich them over here so what i'm saying if the user is bob what you do you add extra claim which is nothing but custom claim and custom value so i am adding so before adding i'll show you what all claims this guy is having you see there is no claim called custom claim the moment i add you should be able to see the third third in the one also you can see it's coming now custom claim name and custom claim value now if i release the request see it's able to call the api see it's able to call the api the bob is able to access the api other user was not able to call the api so have you are you are able to understand how we are able to enable the authorization in this now i'll show you one more use case i already explained you so for example Let's say you want to uh, do some operation and the token you found something and you will say, okay, no, no, I don't want to allow this user to use this. So what I'll say, I, I can put, I just a random message. So like that doesn't have a, a score, uh, like a specific scope. I will just say unauthorized. Even the user is valid, but I'm saying unauthorized, I'll return. Just an example I'm just saying. So it's saying does not have a right scope and it's saying 401. Because I'm returning 401, you can return any status code by the way. Let me call again. This time I'll give you another example. Let me say, let's say I want to return this one error. So I'll, I'm some random error. I'm, it will, this time it will say internet server error. I'm some random error. So I have, I hope you're getting the context how to use the middleware. I'm like how to inject that custom middleware into the oscillate pipeline and do that uh, your operation based on your requirement. Getting? Okay, one more thing. Uh, this is the thing which is important which i forgot to tell you right now so for example i told you right this is a hard coded email id definitely your in your case the email ids or user information will be sitting there in the db so what you could do you how you will call uh, you know inject this uh, or maybe how you will fetch that service or db repository or something what you can do you can use this context dot request service get service and type the service name the only thing is you have to inject the service before i mean like you have to register the service before itself and then using this object you can fetch the email id or you can say whether this email id is there in the db if it's there do something or maybe do not do i mean like you just depending on your requirement if you want to like add extra claim or don't don't want to add extra claim even the claims also right now i have hard coded which you can see over here even though these claim also you can fetch it from the db or maybe like let, let's say you can use one more example let's say um you want to cache the request so you need to have a cache object right so using this you can get that cache service uh, 
or what you can do is see the url pattern based on that you can see on your cache that the data is already there if data is already there immediately return using this pattern if here you can say a 200 and whatever the json is there take it from the cache and return it okay so that means in that case you will not be even you would not be even calling the underlying microservice you will be returning immediately getting so it, it it's up to you how you want to use this api or a custom middleware all right that's all about uh, this example and uh, now since i am using a postman to generate the token in your case a ui or a mobile app or depending on the your client so for example let's say you have a password base or something let's say you can say you will be generating using a password technique you can just grant type in the password i have password i have, i showed you and how i was generating so far i was using grant type is called to code and i'll show you the, the code is uh, this one where you have a callback and then in case of the grant type it's plain simple you just uh, say grant type and the username and password and secret and uh, the client id in the scope once you generate it you will be able to get the token and that means this ebob is trying to access the system and when you pass this token to the underlying microservice you will be able to call the one api i, I would say both api because the bob is there in the, which is having the extra claim if you register with any other user and pass this token to the gateway it will be able to access only i mean this guy will be able to access only one api all right that's all about this video thank you very much